So what I'm hearing is if you can get a handle on the food, there may not be a need for the medication. There may not be a need for a lot of things. So these are not inevitable results that have to happen. People think histamines are just about allergies. And people hear words like mast cell, or they hear words about histamines, and they don't even really know what it's really about. And there's a misunderstanding even with doctors what histamines about. So if you actually look at the right upper corner here, those orange particles are, let's say, food that your body react to. So let's say for someone that was chestnut. So when the chestnut allergen shows for this person who's sensitive, their mast cell actually have receptors for chestnuts that when chestnuts, the antigen hits it, it makes all these antibodies like IgG antibodies that, says, that starts a reaction. One of the reactions in this mast cell, which is one of the white blood cells does, is it creates all these little molecules called histamines. Now histamines, if you ask medical doctors and you ask the allergists, all that would be responsible would, it would be responsible would be what we see on the left, which is allergy symptoms. Everybody knows antihistamines is for your itchy eyes, runny nose, you know, post-nasal drip, or, you know, um, everybody knows those are histamine kind of related allergy symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. However, histamines isn't just about allergies. It's about everything. And you can take that quote to the bank. And here's why you take the histamine pathway. And on the right, you see, it says inflammation. Histamine ha is a big contributor to chronic pain, inflammation, nerve pain, swelling, right? Big thing. So like histamines, chronic pain, big deal. Wow. Well, I just have never heard another provider connect the dots in this way that histamine can lead to all of these downstream effects, even to things like cancer. Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of transform. Go ahead, click the link and I'll see you in that training. Well, look at this, look at the cardiovascular system. So do you know that histamines will actually cause arteries to dilate? This is why, you know, we get that swellings and we get sometimes watery eyes or runny nose, but it can do that throughout your arteries. And as a result, it can cause blood pressure fluctuations. So how many of you have POTS? How many of you have what we call tachycardia or irregular heart rate, or just feel like you're going to faint dizziness off balance and histamines actually have a big role in causing fluctuating heart rate and blood pressure, right? Right. And how many of you have autoimmune disease brain nodes where your fingers and your toes turn white or get super cold? That's a cardiovascular blood vessel effect from the food you ingested that is producing some histamines. So histamine is related to cardiovascular problems. Like all of the stuff we just talked about, POTS, Raynaud's, blood pressure fluctuations, tachycardia, you know, uh, how many emergency room visits do you need to have a negative EKG and blood work to realize histamines and food is causing this problem for so many people, right? Uh, so many issues. And Tracy wants to know, hey, can it even cause headaches? I'm assuming the answer yes. is. Yes, because you know what? Headaches, specifically migraines, is caused by dilation of blood vessels in your head. And histamines, I just said, cause blood vessel dilation. Boom, Tracy. Take that to me. <laughs> Boom. All right? How many of you have headaches? We laid it with food. There's a mechanism here with histamines and those blood vessels and your blood pressure and the swelling of those blood vessels. Boom. Right? Wow. And then we central nervous system. Like, think about the food impacting your central nervous system, which means it causes brain fog, depression, anxiety, ADD, sensory processing, autism spectrum. Wow. Autism spectrum. So you're talking about, yes, some ADD. So many people either themselves or have children that are trying to find solutions and trying to make life go along a little bit easier with some of these conditions. And this yeah. is a contributing factor. Well, think about Chris. We just did an interview with Chris and her story. It's, it's incredible. She did this program herself and she applied the principles and food mapping to her child. And three months later, her child who wasn't able to read, how old, a seven-year-old, her son, seven-year-old. Yeah, I think seven. This is so incredible. I mean, she even sent me a video because she was, 
I was pretty much moved to tears actually through this because she, it, as a parent, anybody who's a parent out there, you know, you just want the best for your child and you try so hard and you're doing all of the things, right? And you're researching and you're staying up late at night and you're going through evaluations and you're, and you're asking yeah. questions to anybody who will talk to you. And she couldn't, she couldn't get this under control for her child. Yeah. And by implementing <laughs> what you have told them to do, Dr. Maggie, I mean, it was like within days, her child was re not only recognizing letters now, but reading for the first time yeah. ever. And I hear this all the time, right? Which is like, this is really important for you guys to understand is, is that we, we are so quick to diagnose kids with autism spectrum, PANS, PANDAS, um, you know, um, dyslexia, ADD, ADHD, and medicate them. When one of the really important pathways you have to understand is food is causing central nervous system changes and reactions and development in them. And I'll even tell you about a study. This is a fascinating study, Anne. Mm -hmm. They took almost like, I think it was two to 300 kids on each arm of the study. In one arm of the study, they actually just took away the seven most common food allergens. It was an elimination diet test, right? Uh, eliminating some foods, top seven food allergens. And then on the other side, they put those kids on ADD medication. Hmm. And the result in improvement of cognition on both groups is exactly the same. Wow. So what, you're, what I'm hearing is, if you can get a handle on the food, there may not be a need for the medication. There may not be a need for a lot of things. There may not even be a need for a lot of these results. Why would these results have to happen? These are not inevitable results that have to happen in our kids or in ourselves, right? And going back on histamine, I mean, even look at this down here, you see that uterus part mm -hmm. on the left lower corner? There are actually data to show that histamines can cause the amount of estrogen levels to be different in the uterus. So there's a role of histamines in hormones. And I'm going to ask you guys all out there right now, how many men, women, children, teenagers out there are having hormone problems? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was right. it it's, I mean, and you hear so Diane, many people, and it can totally Diane, disrupt your life. This is interesting. Diane just posted this. She has had, she's shared a post in the, in the Facebook group. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group, there's a link to make sure you join their Facebook group. Um, Diane posted a couple of years ago. I don't know how I remember this, but her daughter had all these period or hormonal problems. And by implementing Diane did the program herself. And by implementing everything that she knew with food mapping, digestion, her daughter's periods and hormonal problems got better and better and better. Diane, just share in chat what her results were. Cause I don't remember all the details, but well, I just I'm remember that you remember this at all, Dr. Maggie, because you work with thousands and thousands, thousands. Well, yeah, I remember to raw Diane posted in chat. She'll, she's, she's a better historian than I am on it. Yeah. Um, so the hormones, like these histamines have an impact. Food can cause hormonal shifts. And, and how many providers have you worked with? Number yes. one, that has to do with how many GI docs, allergies, allergists, naturopaths, functional medicine doctors you worked with for food allergens understand a lick about digestion, hormone balancing, central nervous system changes with mood, anxiety, brain fog, autism spectrum. How many of them linked it with your POTS, right? With, <laughs> with your Ray nodes, right? That's... The, that's the master level wisdom that I think is critical for people to learn themselves that I teach when we do my food mapping masterclass. Well, and look at this result from an alumni saying, I was recently able to stop a daily antihistamine on this every single day for 15 years for histamine intolerance because through your program, got a hold of digestion and infection as well. Yeah. Yeah. Got off the daily antihistamine. So that just goes to show you. Yeah, you're you are addressing that's it. Kim. By the way, that's Kim. And Kim had, if you guys ever saw her story, there was one of the things that really touched me about her story is that she was the teacher in the classroom and um, she used to always apologize. I, 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 am I outing you, Kim? But I think you've shared this on a video. So um, she would apologize to the kids and say, sorry, your teacher is kind of like, you got some brain fog today because of the L word, which is lupus. And by the following year, her new class, the next class next year, she never had to mention the L word again. And 
I love that. I love that well, story. I get chills because I can tell <laughs> Dr. Maggie, even your reaction. So first of all, you remember this story and you're oh, emotional yeah. about it because you care. And I think that's also what separates you, Dr. Maggie, if I do say so myself, is the connections that you make, not just with the data, but with the human with the individuals. You listen and you and you get to know everybody and um, you're just unlike any other doctor, both when it comes to data and when it comes to the relationships. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in actively looking for a solution to your problem and you'd like to work with us, I'm gonna invite you to go ahead and click the link in the description to book a chat with our team. I and my team look forward to talking to you to learn more about you to see if we are indeed a good fit to work together. Thank you.